Sooners rule hit me and said, who are some under the radar quarterbacks who could have a big impact on the 2024 season? How do we define under the radar? I think Kyle McCord's under the radar. But yet Kyle McCord started for Ohio State last year. I think he's under the radar because many a college football fan can't even tell me where he's playing right now. Now, if you're listening or watching this show, you, you are a diehard and you're not a casual per se, and you know he went to Syracuse. They've been getting great reviews from him up at Syracuse during spring. And I don't claim that Pate State is your Syracuse football headquarters or anything like that, but I'm paying attention and I don't think enough people are. He was a 66% completion rate guy last year. He has big game experience. And you know what? That schedule is not exactly a murderer's row this year. So you got experience. Uh, Fran Brown in his first year, the league doesn't know what to expect. Remember when Malzahn walked into the SEC once upon a time and all of a sudden there they are playing for a national championship and people are like, what, what, the high school coach from Arkansas? It can happen that way. I'm just saying if it does at Syracuse, it'll be because of Kyle McCord. How about Will Rogers? Played like 17 years at Mississippi State. Where is he? Quick, quick quiz question there. Where's Will Rogers? Well, he's at Washington now. Lost in all the talk about the coaching transition and the roster churn at Washington is the idea that not only did they get Will Rogers, but he's being put back in a system custom built for him. That wasn't the case last year. It was an oil and water situation in his last year at Mississippi State. But now he's at Washington, and for all of the unknowns around there, one of the things I think I do know is Jed Fish will put Will Rogers in, in an up-tempo, spread-based offense that is perfectly built for his skill set. He could throw 4,000 yards this year. Maybe they go 6-6. Six and six, I don't know, but I think Will Rogers is in a lot better position this year. And even if they don't achieve anything of note record-wise, they play Michigan, uh, they play USC, they play Penn State, they play Oregon. Who could they knock off? That's the other thing to think about. Rocco Becht. I, yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you in a second. Yeah, I'll tell you. Okay, so first, firstly, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, Rocco Beck at Iowa State, one of the most under-the-radar, underrated quarterbacks in college football. He started in 13 games last year at Iowa State, and they're top five in returning production this year. And we were up there a few weeks ago, and I want to tell you, that kid had offers. He's a really good player. He's going to be a really good player. And he could have left there, and he chose not to. And it's not necessarily because dollar for dollar was matched. He's Iowa State. And not only does he know that, not only does his family know that, the locker room knows it. Uh, the building knows it. The coaching staff knows it. So you got a really talented kid there coming into his own. You got a good supporting cast around him. You don't have to worry about how stable he is. He is all in because he's already turned down offers that would have suggested otherwise. And Iowa State this year, they go to Iowa in, or they go to Iowa in week two. And then it's, it's a bunch of North Dakota, Arkansas State, Houston. They do not open with a front-loaded schedule. It doesn't mean they can't get beaten, but it means there, there's a path there where Iowa State goes from being totally off of everyone's radar except for mine to being in the thick of the Big 12 championship race. Guess who they close with? They end with Kansas State in Ames, 1130, not AM. It's November 30th, and they play Utah the week before. So... That back, that back stretch is tough, but at least you know what you've got by then. Hey, does anyone know where Tyler Van Dyke is? As it turns out, these were a lot of transfers and Rocco Becht and one more guy in a second. Tyler Van Dyke's at Wisconsin. He was at Miami last year. A lot of ups and downs, too many downs last year. Turnovers were just a big issue. I think it got to him mentally a little bit. We've seen both sides of him. I mean, he's, he's obviously got the potential to do really good things, but I think they need a strong cast around him and they need a really strong start this year because I think he is a guy that has to shake those cobwebs of last year out. But if he starts feeling himself, man, like Wisconsin is not going to be a program that just leans on quarterback. They're going to have good players around him, a good scheme, good plan, good culture in place. Year two under Luke Fickle. Maybe they do something this year. They got Bama in their week three. They go to USC week four. They've got Penn State. They've got Oregon. So they got a lot of the big boys they're playing this year. And lastly, but not leastly, 
Jalen Daniels is at Kansas. And there was all that talk about whether he'd go in the portal, and he didn't. The talk is about the back injury. If he recovers from that back injury and is able to be his former self, it seems like he's been forgotten. And if he's back to his former self, Kansas can win the Big 12. Like, Kansas could be a college football playoff team, point blank. You heard me right. And it would be possibly because of him, but also they've got a great schedule draw. So, you know, look, at this point, if Kansas is sneaking up on you, that's your fault. They do have a very interesting situation this year where they can't play at home. So they've got to play some games in Arrowhead and they got to play some games in a sporting KC's stadium, I believe. Check me on the soccer stadium references there. But Jalen Daniels, yeah, he also, I think, belongs on this list.